Hello and welcome to the standalone installation of Revit Architecture 2011. In this video we will be walking through a typical standalone installation of Revit 2011 products. This course is intended to walk through a standalone installation of Revit Architecture 2011. You will learn things to do before you begin, how to locate your serial number and product key, and the process of a typical installation. Before you begin, there are some very important items to ensure you've checked. First, review the installation documentation. Next, check the system requirements to ensure your workstation meets the minimum requirements to install and run Revit Architecture 2011. Next, confirm that you have administrative permissions on that workstation. Revit products must be installed with a user account with full administrative permissions. Next, turn off any antivirus software and ensure that the process itself for the antivirus application has been closed in the Windows Task Manager. Next, ensure all other running applications are closed or disabled to ensure that the install is the only active application on the workstation. Next, choose your language to ensure you are installing with the correct language. And lastly, before you get into the installation process, ensure to locate your serial number and product key so you're not looking for this information during the install process. For serial number and product key locations, in our first example, you can see you can find this information directly on the product box. In this example, you can see the serial number and product key highlighted in yellow. The next location to verify your serial number and product key location would be in your electronic fulfillment email. Here you will have any serial number, product key, or previous serial numbers along with the total seats you have of that product. And third, to locate your serial number or product key, you can also go to the Subscription Center, Contract Administration, on the Coverage Report, you can see the selected product details which will also list the serial number and product key for that particular product. Next we're going to walk through a typical installation of Revit Architecture 2011. If you're installing from DVD Media, this dialog box will pop up after you insert the disk media. If you're installing from downloaded media, you will need to run the setup.exe file located in the extracted directory where you saved the downloaded media. After either running the setup.exe file or inserting the disk media, on this screen you will have several options related to installing the product. We can install the product, create a standard deployment, install tools and utilities such as a network license utility or various administrative and reporting tools, or as always read the documentation. For this example, we're going to choose Install Products to install our standard installation. On our first screen, there are a few items to keep in mind. One, on the left, there is a sidebar with various help links which change based on the page you are on. This is important to note should you have any questions along the installation process. On the right, we're going to be asked which products we would like to install. The top, Autodesk Revit Architecture 2011, should be checked by default. If you do not have Autodesk Design Review 2011, this will also be checked and should not be able to be changed by the user. Also, the third option for the Autodesk Material Library 2011 Medium Image Library. If you will be rendering in Revit Architecture 2011, it is recommended to include the Medium Resolution Library, which will be good if you're doing close-ups or medium quality renderings. Once we have selected the products to install, we can press the Next button. This will take us to the End User License Agreement. It is very important to review and accept the license agreement. This will make you aware of what you can and cannot do with your software license. If the country or region is not correct, please change to the correct country or region. On the left, as always, it tells you which product this license agreement applies to. Once you have read the terms of the license agreement, 
you can click on I accept and press the next button to move on to the next page. On the next screen, we'll be entering our user and product information. Here we'll enter the first and last name associated with our product as well as the organization. Ensure that you type your first, last, and organization exactly as it appears on your product documentation. Next, if you would like to use the product as a 30-day trial, you would select the first option here. Second, if you already have all your product documentation and information, you can enter your serial number and product key exactly as it appears on your documentation. When complete and you've verified all information is accurately entered, you can hit the next button to continue with the installation process. On the next screen, we can choose to install our product or go ahead and make configuration changes to the default settings for our installation. Let's go ahead and configure our installation to go through the available options. Clicking configure will take us into the configuration for our product. The first option we have here is to select the license type for the installation. The two options for standalone or network license are available. If choosing a network license setup, we will have three options for the license server model. The first, single license server, the second, distributed license server, and the third, redundant license server. Lastly, here you will enter the name of the license server that will be running the network license manager. In this installation, we will be choosing standalone license. Let's hit next to go to page two of the configuration options. Here we have various application preferences. The first is the language of the product. Second, we have our default units, either imperial or metric. Third, we have default usage, architectural or construction. Next, we can choose to create a desktop shortcut with the installation to launch the product. Please take note of the installation folder. Here you can change the folder from the default location and by default 2011 products are installed in the Autodesk folder within program files by the product name. In this case, program files Autodesk Revit Architecture 2011. Verify the disk space requirements to ensure enough available hard drive space is available. You can also see what is required of the installation and what will be remaining after the installation is complete. Let's hit next to go to page three of the configuration options. Here we have options for content selection. We can choose to install family libraries along with templates and you can expand this list here to see the available content. We can also choose to skip the content installation if you do not wish the above content to be installed. Next, if needed, you can customize the content folder that the above content will be installed during the installation process. And lastly, again, we will see the disk space requirements of what is available, required, and will be remaining after the installation. Let's hit next to go to page four of the configuration options. Here, if available, we can include a service pack with our installation. In this case, the product is up to date, no service pack is available. If there was a service pack available from Autodesk.com, it would be available and listed in the second tab here, and we could choose to install or to not install the service pack with the installation. Let's hit next, which should take us to the configuration complete. Here, we can hit configuration complete to end the customization process or we can choose another product to customize the installation for. But let's hit configuration complete to go back to the installation menu. The last step is to actually install the product. The following list on the left will list the components and products that will be installed during this process. When ready, you can press the install button to begin the installation process. If you are prompted for a folder that is not empty, you can press yes to continue with the installation. Revit will install various components and give you a list of the progress of the installation process.
During the installation, you will see various content folders being extracted to the desired target folder. After the content is extracted, the various material libraries, if included with the installation, will be installed. When the installation is complete, the products that succeeded installation will be listed. You may also view the installation log file at the path provided here, and additionally you can view the content of the README before starting each program. By default they are checked. If you do not wish the readmes, you can uncheck and click the finish button to finish the installation process.